what do we have since last week, which was 21st? Twenty first of January. So this was done already. Manage pagination blog post archive. So that's not new. We saw that. There is something you didn't maybe I need to fetch. Yes, that's it. That's why. So remove archive later task if content item is deleted, meaning if you add an archive later task and you need a content item. There is no reason to execute the archive later task. Remove newly added terms before processing, uh, which is, I think, for the archive. Taxonomy service remove newly items terms for. What is that? I don't see. Remove newly added terms before processing. Oh, this, yeah, that's fixing the filter which was wrong. So now it's the filter is, is fixed. Make it faster. Tweak terms part handler to skip and publish terms, same thing. Optimization in the taxonomy uh, management by this new contributor, Glenn. Um, and that's it on Orchard 1. Good contributions for the past two weeks. New contributors, uh, Orchard Core, I will fetch in 28, no, 21st, 21st, uh, 21st, I will just click there. I met a bunch of PRs this morning and what do we have? 21st, um, Andre, this we talked about, move the OpenID server deployment services to server startup to fix a bug in deployment plans. So moving a declaration from one startup to the other, probably because of feature dependencies. Uh, page route model null check because this could be null and get an exception. Fixes application index page. Uh, Page convention collection, so something to do with razor pages, probably due to the change, the recent change on razor pages. So fixing an issue with the home page of razor pages. Okay. Project static files watching. Um, there was an issue that some files were not uh, tracked in dev mode. And um, some, yeah, so this is the fix. Fix content item index and apply length checking to auto route part. Fix content item index. So this one is more complex. Um, I will let Dean explain if he remembers. There are many issues that were fixed. Yeah, I would just apply some um settings there on the auto route to make sure that it stays under a thousand characters or you get exceptions from sql and that was wrong so i fixed that um because on the content item index we keep it to a maximum length and previously it was starting at the maximum length and taking the rest of the string let's say some devs have a SQL database with texts that are like 2K, and then they decide, I want to add an index. Will SQL Server prevent them from creating this index? No, it won't. Um, the only issue becomes if you then try to create an index inside of the index. Um, so an index is a table, right? 
I'm not talking about a SQL or Oracle or anything. If I have a SQL database with a record and a, a colon that that has more than 2K, than 1K data, and I decide to add an index on that, a SQL index. Then you will run into problems. Um, it will give you a warning when you create the index um, if the value is over, I think, 850 characters under the standard collation. Um, so 1700 bytes. Uh, and then when you try to save something that is larger than that 1700 bytes, so 2000 characters, it will give you an exception. Okay. So here you also add an index and publish because we do a request filtering all the auto part index table unpublished only. So this is a minor optimization, I think, because because most, yeah, it's just on startup, so that's okay. Um, and this one is just to trim the text. Uh, yeah, mostly when we're cloning. Um, so not actually a reported issue. I just I fixed it somewhere else the same way. So make it right. Okay, reduce length of indexes for text field and link field. So same issue, but in this case. We have two columns, uh, the URL and the big URL. The URL being the one that is trimmed and, the, and indexed, and the big URL, which is the original data, um, which is not indexed. And, and, and you see here, text, big text, so this is for the text field. Um, the text is trimmed and queryable, the big text is not trimmed and not queryable. Well, not indexed. It's not indexed, you can still query it, but... Yeah. I have to admit, yes, I wish, and yeah, so it's gone now. Oh, did someone admit? Yes, I admit it. Thank you. So now you're responsible to admit everyone when someone joins. Thank you. So I don't have to do that. Ah, awesome. I didn't know <laughs> that someone else could admit. Thank you. Because I I heard the beep and then I saw Tyson, Gibby, uh, join. I'm like, I didn't admin. admit. Thank you, Gabor. Add Vue.js and Fontosum to local resources because some, well, these resources were not available locally. So if you don't have internet or your, the CDN we're using doesn't work for your uh, region, then you will have issues. So now we decided that these two will also be shipped as part as a module, in this case, the resources module, I assume, and then the references to um, that things are now pointing to the resource module directly. Um, sort workflow instances. Uh, so there is a new filter now, such that we can sort by creation date um, and by default it's descending to so the latest at the top. Workflow order created, descending, created. We don't have, no, names doesn't make sense probably. H. Why H? It should be S or T. You didn't define this variable, but I think it was, I thought it was all moved to S or T in a controller at least. In a view, it will be H. Well, there are both a string localizer and an HTML localizer. So this is wrong then. This should be a string localizer. because you're getting a string here, right? If it's an HTML localizer, this will be encoded. The dot value will be encoded. And then the text, when it's rendered, will also be encoded. Mm -hmm. That's why it should be a string localizer. So this one is not encoded, but the next step will be encoded. And it's not your fault, okay? Because it's already the case here. 
but I think this is if it's H HTML localizer, that's wrong. That's why I was saying it should be S or yeah, it should be S here. It should use S string localizer. Okay. I let you fix that if you if you want to fix it or file an issue at least. Um, update demo admin controller to render inside admin area. Update demo admin controller to render inside admin area. Because otherwise it's just a text without layout. Okay, it's just a demo. Uh, okay, just to fix on the demo module. I area controller route mapper. I merged this morning. It was an old one. Um, updating the way the admin prefix is applied by using custom what's called um, convention. Convention. And also constraint. That will ensure that the admin URLs start with admin and also ensure that it's done correctly for the controllers that are named admin, not the ones that start with admin. Pete uh, found an issue, well, had an issue due to a recent change due to that, which is that um, um, before every admin, well, every controller that will start with admin, and in this case, I think admin item controller will be an admin controller. But now with this new convention and this refactoring, it has been decided on purpose to only do that for the controllers named admin. So admin item controller doesn't fall into this uh, category. And uh, it broke his, your, his link and also uh, URL. So. Um, and also the fact that it was an admin controller, so the admin theme was not correctly applied, just the front end theme. So just a reminder, if you have admin controllers, they have to be named admin controller or have the admin attribute on that. This will ensure that the URL is strictly using the admin prefix or whatever you decided. This will ensure that the user has the admin permission. And this will also apply the admin theme to the views from this controller. Add localized items to GraphQL. There was no way to get Boom, thank you, whoever did that. <laughs> there was no way to get um, the localization set of a content item. So now it's a property on a content item if it has the localization part. And second is to be able from a content item to get a localized version of it. So now you can say dot, well, you can say localizations. And then there is a parameter. If you don't pass a parameter, it will give you all the localizations of this content item. So the, all the other content items in the same um, localization set. Or if you pass a custom parameter, which is a culture, you will get the culture for that. There is no data loader so far. The data loader is a way to batch all these resolutions with a single query. Meaning that if you have a GraphQL query that returns a set of content items, and for all of them you do dot localizations for English, then it will do one query for each content item to get its uh, localization in English. So that can be a select and plus one issue. But in um, a standard usage, when you want a localization, a localization for a specific, well, specific language, you usually do that for one content item. So that should not be an issue for now. But later it can be optimized to um, batch getting localized content items. Also something that could be missing here is a direct query to say, I want this content item ID in English. So as a query and not um, a field inside a content item. That might be also useful. Um, then Yanis, whose name seems to be Greek also. Um, found some optimization, interesting optimization. So what we used to do is resolve the content definition manager, then query the 
type definition and then find the part that is named the same way to find, see here, oh, give me the part that is named the same way as the one we are using and take the first one and get the settings. Well, it happens that in the context, we already have the type part definition of the part we are currently editing, so we can just get the settings. So we made this, which makes the code simpler and technically faster. I'm not saying it will be super faster, super faster, but it's something less to do, so it's better. Good job, and you did that for all the parts. So whenever you are creating a part now, uh, remember that the settings can be accessed from the context directly, and maybe you will need the overload that takes the context as a parameter. Uh, Hi, uh, sorry, you said Yanis is Greek, and he is uh, one of the oldest uh, members of community. Yes, yes, Yanis yes, on on the on the community. Yes, even for mature one, and I, but I didn't realize he was Greek because maybe his account was not showing his real name when he was contributing. Or maybe he never contributed, just filed issues and took on the forum. I don't know. I don't remember seeing his name here. Um, but thanks, Soteris, for letting us know. So that's, that's, that means I know three Greek people working, contributing to Ultron. You, Yanis, and... Um, Michalis. Michalis, yes. Thank Michael, you. Michalis. Yeah. Michael, Super. Michael, yeah. Um, then, so I made it for five different or six different drivers. Maybe there are some more, but you see the code is simpler, more red than green. Good job. Um, do not check include all content types in deployment steps. So when you create a uh, content type deployment step, it won't be all the types by default. You can select the ones you want or say everything. I think it's, it's better also. Um, until someone creates a PR to make it false by uh, true by default. <laughs> and we'll say, oh, that's a good idea. Let's make it true by, true by default. That happens a lot. Um, and that's it for the PRs. So um, oh, let me check something. I see there is some chat. Um, I will let whoever wants to admin Dave. Um, or Russell has issues apparently. Yeah. Um, so, so Thierrys, you were on my agenda. Are you still on my agenda? Uh, yes. Okay. I remember first you mentioned something with your, you had a question for JavaScript and CSS. I don't know what it was. And then you said you had something to demo, and I don't remember what. Okay, it's uh, about a simple. Uh, Client side stripe integration. Oh, okay. Do you still want to demo that? Yeah. Good. So, are you ready to share or do you want us to do something else in the meantime? Uh, yeah, I can share. Thank you. Awesome. Stripe. Stripe is awesome, so the demo will be awesome, right? <laughs> stripe is awesome. Uh, okay. Can you see my screen? Well, I, I assume you have four screens on your desktop <laughs> and and we can see one screen in the top left corner. Oh, really? Okay. Um, so I, I don't know what you did. <laughs> okay, let's uh, share my screen. This one. Yes. Is it better? Too many screens. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, not one screen, just... Uh, yeah, we see one screen and we, we see it perfectly in full screen. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, this uh, registration site soon to go live. And, uh, Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Thanks. So, it's, uh, you know, it's also cool. So wow. Um, very, very proud of this, actually. This is your first Orchard Core website? Uh, actually, yes. Actually, yes. Good. And it's better than Python, right? <laughs> no. What? Uh, well, yeah, what? Yeah. It's, fast, it's faster than Python. It's faster, it's faster, actually, yes. So I'm impressed with uh, the Orchard Core and the new. Uh, 
features that it has. So, uh, first, what I was like to to have and uh, I don't have is uh, if you click here in sources, uh, there are some um, CSSs and some fonts. Everything else is from CDN, but I would like to have uh, uh, this one. So some custom CSSs that are not bundled with uh, the theme, okay. uh, or some custom JS uh, JavaScript, a small one that is not bundled uh, with the theme. So as to so make, I, I, uh, will stop, I will stop you here. Are you yeah. trying to say to show us something that is not part of Forgeot Core and you would like to see being done, or are you about to show us how you fixed it? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the fix is, uh, is is a hack. So, <laughs> so you are complaining. You are just complaining here, right? Uh, no, That's it's okay. uh, just uh, actually I'm uh, bringing into the table a discussion. That, okay. Uh, That's um, the it, first point you wanted to talk about the JSCSS yes, thing. Okay, now I I get it. Okay, good. Go okay. ahead. So uh, I think that uh, Sipke. Uh, has mentioned that uh, we should have uh, uh, an area that the user can upload some CSS and JS uh, content inside Orchard. In the admin? In the admin, yes. So you upload static assets. Yes, we have an issue for that. We know exactly mm -hmm. how to do that and we agree. Okay, first point. Then. Okay, so uh, the workaround for me is that uh, if I want to make some changes, and uh, not to publish the site every time. I created uh, in a blog storage. Uh, I see. Yeah, the site there. So, okay, so. First, them in the theme. So you started from the blog theme and yeah, exactly. you can change directly on the blog theme and just have one CSS or bundle whatever you want with it and deploy mm -hmm. and you will have one CSS. But then you are stuck because if once you deploy, you want to do changes, well, you can't bundle anymore. Well, that would be a nice addition to be able to dynamically bundle different static files on the server side. I think mm -hmm. um, uh, Lombic has a module like that for Orchard 1 and you can bundle it's... dynamically on the server side. But you will also be able at least to change the CSS or any static file dynamically without having to redeploy, meaning directly in the admin. OK, so yes. I see. OK, that's uh, one, the one part with CSS and JS. So uh, for the Stripe thing, what we have done here is... And then to finish the discussion, yes, we have yeah. an issue like that. And the, the idea will be um, like the templates module to be able to list elements or like the media module to be able to browse a folder of st static assets, but that are provided by the app itself. So like they will be stored in the database. Okay. And, and we talked about it already and using what Dean has made for the Azure Blob Storage, which is a middleware that will cache locally some assets that um, well, when I mean cache locally, I mean that we store these cache items on the local folder, on the local file system. And whenever we, act, we try to access a CSS that will be in a database, if it's not in the file system, we will download from the database and store it there and serve it as a file. And if it has changed, then we will refresh it uh, or clear maybe the local cache. So you will, in the admin, be able to upload images, any static file, anything that can be static. It can't be evaluated dynamically, but anything that has to be served statically will be. We mm -hmm. could upload it on the on the admin and probably also edit it if it's a text file. That would be yeah. That would be that would be great. Um, so that will solve your issue. And I'm sure lots of people issues. Yeah, I think that it will be useful for everyday uh, users of sites and admins of sites. So Jasma has a comment. Why not use a param on the website like mod equal dev, which will replace the current website path to your CSS assets? No, I don't. I don't understand how it will solve that, which will be served on your local host. 
I don't understand how it's related to that. He wants to make changes on his CSS on, on his website. He wants to develop the website without changing the asset on the on the server. Yes. So this way he can just change the assets on his locals and uh, open the website, which would point to the asset that is on his locals by adding a param on his websites. We do that often just to be able to develop. But life. what happens? So what? appears when you say mod equals dev. So if I have a CSS and I say foo.css, query string mod equal dev, what happens? It just changes with JavaScript the path, uh, the absolute path, the, the part that, is, that says uh, HTTP dot. Uh, yeah, but what happens then? Which, which replaces that for, for the localhost uh, server that you have. So it's you're just going to get the, these assets on your localhost server. But of course, the it, of course it won't work for someone that doesn't have. The issue here is to be able to edit a CSS and a JS file. <clears throat> yeah. On the web app. But it needs to change it directly then but we bundled with those assets. How will he bundle those assets on his server? Yeah, this, I, is, I, this is the this is why I'm saying that um, because normally we bundle yeah, before. Okay, but yeah. yeah, it's not about bundling or not here. Even it's about being able to change custom files, not bundled ones. The yeah. bundling is a exactly. yeah. So what is bundled can't be changed, and that's a fine requirement. What the, the first requirement here is to be able to edit custom files, not the one that are bundled, but one the ones that he knows he wants to be able to edit. Um, a, a, a ten years uh, goal would be to be able to dynamically bundle things, but we don't we don't even have an issue for that right now. Yeah, that's first things first, I think. Yeah. Okay, but I get it. Just no, no. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Done. Stripe. So Stripe. Uh, I, I have made the registration form uh, following uh, uh, exactly uh, uh, the directions from uh, or chart documentation. Which is workflow or custom controller? Yeah, workflow. This is a workflow, okay. Yeah. Um, so. And and you used the form module to do that, or you used your a custom view? Uh, this is the form module. I can show you later. Mm -hmm. uh, except the this one, the these two, the select field and the radio button fields that. Uh, Instead of being uh, controls or raw HTML. Okay. The, but there is a widget for that, so you just added a widget raw HTML and it works. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, the form. Okay. Uh, so register and pay. It's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it, it is. Well, it's great for, for us. <laughs> Okay, and uh, so that goes to your web app or to an external. Android? This is, uh, goes directly to, uh, hopefully, to the workflow endpoint. Uh, well, okay, the gray some narrow. You can minimize that thing. It won't stop. Yeah. Minim minimize it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, okay, someone played with Stripe. Anyway, not a successful demo. <laughs> not a bug in Orchard, at least. That's good. No, no, it's not <laughs> important. So, uh, let me what? show you the screen and the, the flow. So what was supposed to happen? The, the endpoint that you trigger when you hit submit goes to workflow. Exactly. Okay. And uh, then a new um, 
So a new participant is registered. OK. Uh, with uh, all uh, the, the fields that. Uh, that is fine, OK. It's a content okay. item. A uh, mail was sent. Let's, let me show you the workflow. Wow. You can even send emails with workflow. Ship good yeah. Also. <laughs> Not to say something. I'm very pleased. Okay. Sipke loves it. Look at that. Yeah. Look at you. This is the first time I see a workflow more complex than what Sipke can do. Yeah, it's true. Yes, <laughs> it's uh, it's sweet. Sipke, it's great. <laughs> so a registration form. We bind the model for model just to keep the values in case of uh, error. We have some validation rules. Uh, recapsa. Uh, the ID number, email, first and name. I will, and I will also uh, congratulate uh, Mathis for the recapture part of it because I assume that Sim that did that. Yeah. Epic. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. So after validation on the form, uh, we have a fork with uh, two branches, one registration form email, the second. Uh, is uh, the enrollment in our system, and then we have a redirection to uh, to Stripe. Uh, good. So, good. Uh, it's not working, but yeah. Uh, yeah but I, I hope I, tomorrow so, it will. So you work. send a request to Stripe, then Stripe will, when it validates the the payment, will send you back to the website on a exactly right. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. so and, I have a question. Yeah. Maybe for you, maybe for Sipke. Do we have an activity that will be send a request, but without redirecting the user, like from the Orchard website, execute a web request, a webhook, and wait for the response and then act based on that? Yes. That's a, that's a send. I don't know the exact name here anymore, but uh, there's a activity that allows you to do exactly that. It's okay. like a HTTP client. And I should yeah, that's the one. Also do that. So yes, because here you didn't take any information for paying anything. That's why you forward to the Stripe website such that you can go to a page to file a payment and then you will add your payment information there and Stripe will go back to your site with a confirmation code and then you will know, OK, the user has validated this payment. So I assume you have another workflow for that to validate the payment. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be one with okay. the Stripe uh, uh, reference number. Yes, and will it be the same workflow where you are waiting for a response like a webhook, or or will you create? Well, that's yeah, it's, it will be the same uh, workflow. It will be a different one, I think. Okay. Because, uh, I'm not sure that uh, this is to be redirect. Okay. I assume it could, be, it could be the same workflow because you could say after HTTP redirect, wait for this webhook. The same yeah, way you would that put it. Work because it's not going to do immediately the, uh, it's not after the HTTP redirect, it won't okay. actually send that response immediately. It will, you will still be able to finish this current request, which means you should be able to navigate or uh, transition into a next blocking activity that would be waiting for. Um, yeah, the hook. Uh, for, yes, for the webhook, for the HTTP uh, event. Okay. And uh, the tricky part that uh, the, uh, the Gitter helped me, uh, this is the, the create code task <laughs> that uh, I have to pass uh, this uh, JSON in order to, to register a new uh, code mm -hmm. item. Um, uh, this this it's great with liquid support liquid is the best yeah <laughs> so what will you be, be what will you do better in this case i have i have some ideas but how could you improve that thing well i think that uh, this code and type should generate this uh, ah, uh, the template the we could, we could, yeah we it could generate you the the object that you can just update by yourself so you don't have to, to to figure out what it could be yeah yeah i see sipko what what i mean why didn't you think about it 
<laughs> I actually <laughs> thought about it, but more in a more complicated way where it would actually render a user-friendly UI, but uh, that's, you know, even okay. more far-fetched, but that suggestion to just generate the template, that's that's perfect. Yeah. So I, I mean, maybe not as perfect, but at least doable. Yeah, I have another suggestion actually, um, which is not to use JSON, templated JSON, but just to use JavaScript. And, and but take the same idea and say return um, an object, like you take this object, but as JSON notation and you say return. So you can do J JavaScript instead of templated JSON. See, hmm. so you will say text colon, and you will say, a request that form that first name, but not as a template, but as a property, because request will be a property of the uh, JavaScript script in this case. So the benefit different. being less quotes. Yes, and then you can also do code there. Like you can compute values, you can right. do groups, you can do whatever you want to generate an object or do multi-phase changes in the same object. Like first do dot content type equals enrollment and then do uh, if author equals admin then uh, enrollment and first name the text equals that and things like this. So, but the idea being it's like a script task, but the result will be a content item. So you do return the content item. Okay. But I'm not sure it's better. I I, uh, I like I like the idea of the template and then you change what you need and yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this, this is uh, pretty straightforward. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's of course true. If you would, if it were JavaScript, then you could, in the simplest form, just return a JSON object uh, with a slightly easier syntax because you don't need to use the quotes. But yeah. Okay, and uh, this is the registration form. Uh, with uh, all the elements. Uh, this is the select that there is a file. Uh, that there is an, an issue in uh, GitHub. You we'll have to check. And this is the radio button. Everything else is uh, pretty straightforward. The recaps as well. So, yeah. So, actually, I have to say that uh, writing a very little code uh, this site is uh, live and uh, and working fast 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 and uh, uh, yeah and we have Stripe payments we have everything okay and i assume it was easier than orchard one huh? sorry it was easier to build than with orchard one uh, it was easier <laughs> You can say no. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was easier due to this factor um, here. Uh, that I built uh, this form with uh, speakers and uh, everything. Okay, yeah, the back part helps a lot here because yeah. So this is helps a lot actually to to, to make a. A single page. Uh, yeah, embedded content uh, where you can add more sections dynamically. It will have been a pain before because you will have to reference content items. Yeah, and uh, I think that the the name part is uh, quite a great idea. Okay. Yeah, I'm proud of it, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are uh, this uh, content item. And you are using localization also? Uh, there is a localization, but uh, they will not uh, yeah. Yeah, use it. That's, so, a big, that's a big content type. Yeah, and it's uh, actually, yes. And all these are, most of these are named parts. OK. OK, that's uh, so, all. Thanks. That's, so, that's yeah. very nice. To it's just right, but uh, it's. It was a Stripe configuration, not an Orchard no, one. No, trust you. That's interesting to see how to integrate Stripe, that you can do it with Workflow already. That would be a super nice article, Sipke. If you were, if you had a Medium blog that you blog <laughs> on, <laughs> and you are looking for super, super nice ideas that will get a lot of traffic and make you rich, that would be, a, that would be an idea to make a, a Stripe workflow. Yeah. 
as long as it keeps simple, people will love it. How you, yeah, to show the extensibility of of the workflow. Not even yeah. extensibility. I mean, possibilities. It's great. Okay, love it. Thanks a lot. Okay. So you tell us, or you tell me, when the website is public with the public domain, so we can um, uh, DDoS it just to see if it's fast enough. Yeah, it's um, the register. <laughs> okay. Um, no. Okay, great. So we got uh, so just CSS files um, edition in admin. That's what you want. Um, Stripe demo with workflow. Um, so that was a comment from Dean. Oh, code completion. Oh, sorry, Dave. Code completion will be the icing on the cake. Just a reminder that we could have uh, HTML fluid, sorry, liquid uh, JavaScript code, code completion if we used the VS Code editor, aka Monaco editor. Uh, but um, we can't use it by default because it doesn't work on mobile. So it's unusable on mobile. It doesn't work. Um, an option would be to just say, well, there are two options. We could still have editors for the text field, for the text parts, HTML parts, and so on, um, to use Monaco in where we want to enable it. Or this could be like reactive so that if it's not mobile, then we will use VS Code, well, Monaco. And if it's mobile platform, then we will switch back to the to the other editor, to the Trombone, for instance. But, uh, but is sorry. now the, the, sorry to interrupt, but is now the reason you're not want to use Monaco is because the admin cannot administrate his site from his mobile phone? Yes. Okay. That's it. I've tried. You can't use it. So... But this is really realistic that somebody is configuring his Orchard site from yes. his mobile phone? Yes. Like you go on the admin and you want to change a content item, a title, it's totally doable. And we even have an issue to make it mobile friendly. Oh. And we worked on that. And if you try to go take your phone and you will see, you go to the admin, it works. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. But uh, JavaScript editing on the phone? Okay. It doesn't work. I don't know what they do in this. They do crazy things, but it doesn't work. So the, the, maybe it's not about, no, I mean, yes, JavaScript, but it's not just about JavaScript. Because if we take the text field editor, then it will be the same editor. The liquid editor, it will be the same editor. So just one thing will block you from editing the site. That's, but I'm saying it's open if it's an option. Then you decide to use it. Okay? But, and if it doesn't work for you. Can't you make something that you run the edit the, the code completion on the site and just do something with uh, JavaScript and send uh, the text? What I was suggesting was to be adaptive. Like if it's a mobile, so we will we will use VS Code by default. But when we detect it's a mobile platform or the size of the screen is too small. I don't know something that that doesn't work today. Then we will switch back to the other one that works. That's some other way to do that. I don't know. Mm. Maybe people have, will have better ideas than me. Admin on mobile. Yes, it works. Yes. And Antoine, the link master. We'll call Antoine Lucine now because he indexes all the issues. Uh, so, uh, Monaco editor and completion for liquid templates. Yes, that would be awesome. I totally agree, but... And duplicate of this one. I even filed the issue, and then I tried. Boom, doesn't work. We can't get... Re oh, okay, yes, so to replace code mirror, okay? But we could have an extra editor based on it, assuming people don't need mobile views. So, yeah, we could we could have an, some custom editors for fields and parts based on Monaco instead of Code Mirror, um, and you will opt in for that, and then that will work. Then, if you are fine with using Code Mirror and doesn't work on mobile, sorry, Monaco and doesn't work on mobile, that's fine. 
or have a third option, which is switching between Colmio and Monaco based on the current uh, browser or platform, and then that will work. That's doable because the Monaco editor is great. JavaScript, so if I type, you see I've got completion, and now, well, it will still work, but from my phone it didn't work, so maybe that's the issue. Can can we try, actually? Will it simulate also? Let's try that. Well, that's not beautiful. It will do the same thing, but nah, it, it's not the same view as what we want, so we can't. It's not a good demo. Um, yeah, CSS. Yeah, it's nice, right? That would be awesome. Yeah. Also, with Liquid, we will have. Nah, I'm not sure we'll have anything for Liquid. It's just HTML. Not supported in mobile browsers. Not only it's not supported, but it doesn't work. Yeah, I saw the GitHub issues. Okay, well. There's something in chat you should see, I think. That's a good description still. Okay, um, topics, comments. Whatever. Um, so I think there was a topic from Pete, actually, again, Peter Davis. And it's Sipke's favorite topic. Sipke, what could it be? Workflows? Nope, second one. Layouts? Nope, third one. That's the only two things that I care about. Nope, really. nope, no. nope. <laughs> my Skype, my Skype, my Skype is full of messages from you. Oh, Harvest. Harvest. Who cares yes. about Harvest? I care about Harvest deeply. Okay. Uh, so the news is that Pete pinged me on 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 um, Twitter saying, "Well, I assume." done for February, right? And I say, yes, it won't happen in February. <laughs> Which means there is only one option, one option available from my side. Uh, I think no matter what. <laughs> um, it won't be London for sure. We're not sure if it's in UK or if it's in Europe when, by the time we do it. so. Um, which I think... Amsterdam, dude, I've read that they don't want um, tourists anymore in Amsterdam. Too many tourists. They say go away. Uh, so we can't do that. Uh, it was nice. Um, I think it's the week between the 13th and the 17th in April. That's uh, my tentative date now. And there won't be after and there won't be before. So my goal is to organize one on these days, uh, which means two months and a half. Um, and for those who didn't follow or don't know, or because we didn't share anything, Sipke is, was looking at uh, Nice and uh, Miami, the closest to Athens and um, Amsterdam being Nice. Okay, I will I will call it Nice because that's how it's named, not nice. Um, so that's an option, but I mean, it's nice also. Okay, where? <laughs> yeah, so there is. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, Alicante. It was a great time. We had a great time in Alicante also. Uh, um, so, yeah, that's. Uh, I will try to target uh, these dates. Uh, I don't know why I write on the chat. I could just write that topics, harvest, and a tentative. April 
I don't know exactly the correct dates, but I think is uh, I think the Sunday is the 19, so that must be something like that. The the weekdays at least should be that. Um, where I won't suggest to do one on the web. I th I think it's it's lame. And that's not as social as meeting everyone. Um, yeah, it needs to be in real life. Yeah. In person. Could it be in many locations? Like, let's do one in, like, at the same time in Athens and. I and don't think that will work because, well, just, at least I, 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 I can imagine people will want to see you speak and see present you on uh, on stage and you know. You can be in two places at the same time. Ask them; they want to see you. I ask. <laughs> said, I don't care. Um, yeah. So what is that? That's oh yeah. I, was, I didn't see the screenshot for for uh, Stripe. So we trust you now. Beautiful. And Stripe supports GPay. Okay. Great. Beautiful. Uh, well, it supports Apple Pay as well. But what? Careful, didn't want us to have a well-known <laughs> folder in my site. Uh, okay. <laughs> the well-known folder. Dot well dash known folder. Yeah. Well. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that. Um, yeah. At least if we could ship Orchard One by that time. Okay. Ship Orchard One. <laughs> Three. Orchard Core One. Oh. That, that was uh, what I meant. Uh, so some issues, some P0, P1 have been solved. So thank you everyone who solved these issues. And I think everyone being Dean and Antoine, I think. Okay. I saw the cartel. What? What did you do? I did the uh, um, uh, security nothing. critical thing. <laughs> you did nothing. Yeah, well, I well. did. But six months ago. Yes. Not since my last call. Yes, we have oh. all fixed some some one zero <laughs> issues, but since last week I asked people to focus on that. I looked, but I could not find I will any only, yet. Now, dude, I will only thank you when you fixed more P zero P one between okay, today okay, and okay, next okay. time. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I will find some for you. Okay. Pro <laughs> you promise you will do it? Yet? Um, so labels uh, P zero. So let me. P0, we are just down to. So, uh, MPC for client login phase, we're not sure the hosting. And this has to be reported. I'm not sure it's true anymore. So, 1 1. So, yeah, 1 1. So, we don't care. Import export module with IN. So, that, but that's not blocking. I will not even put it on P0 because it's not blocking many people. We have to still have to check because it's an old one. So, I'm not really concerned about these two. Maybe I should. Um, not put them as P1. Authority is not working when the content item is created by workflow. Kind of recent, might be wanted to look at that. I think it might also be fixed already. This should be fixed already. Uh, disabling module should disable content parts defined in the module. Um, not a P1. Guidance on stateless configuration, just documentation. Rendering style sheet, or maybe not. Um, no, I think there are still a few open uh, issues in that because we're highly interested in that as well because we are on, on a Kubernetes cluster and yes. we're also uh, on stateless. Yes, and and uh, Gentil, but it won't be for one zero. Gentil has many things for that, and we have so many plans, but just plans. Rendering style sheets with style tag helper from widgets. Okay, but not. P1 for 1.0, uh, duplicate recorders in workflow, uh, handle authorized results, maybe. It's easy. This one is easy to do. This one is an easy one. We did that in one controller. The idea is that instead of returning not found or an authorized result or change result, we actually need to do that. Replace return unauthorized. So whenever we do, if user is authorized to do whatever permission, we say if not, return unauthorized. And that's wrong. What we need to do is return if is authenticated, forbid. If is not, challenge. Meaning, if the user is currently authenticated and we found he doesn't have the permission, we should just send them forbid. You can't do that. 
if the user is not authenticated, then it means maybe we need to make him authenticated. So let's, we need to return a challenge. That's the challenge that needs to happen everywhere we have um, an, a return unauthorized. And uh, we could do a global help ex um, method extension to help that on the controller that will help. Um, called forbid or challenge, return forbid or challenge but based on the current. But isn't the framework already doing that? Sorry? Is it this handled by the .NET framework? If you say uh, no. uh, return unauthorized on an authenticated user, nope. I, th I think the problem that we had also is that you um, set the uh, sorry, I forgot. You set the uh, somewhere the configuration. You set it wrong that you say, hey, if you're unauthorized, just blow up. But we changed it, and it's, this is no longer. A, but I ha would have to look into this. Yeah. Uh, no, so I, I, yeah. Okay. And I talk with uh, Thierry, and also with Kevin. Dude, okay. this is a conversation between three French people. We are we are right. Okay? <laughs> of course. <laughs> so just saying. There are even sims and it, everything. It will so be it hard. Must be true, and it's on yeah. the internet. So it will be hard to change a French mind, but three of them. Good luck. Okay. Um, so that should be easy to actually fix, but feel free, please comment on that if you think it's wrong. Mobile friendliness, that should be postponed now because we are mobile friendly enough. We can do a review, but yeah, it should be fine. How to display content attempts associated to a taxonomy term? Um, probably documentation because we have found many ways to do that. Oh no, we have an issue to, to, to fix that. Uh, the, taxonomy routes and the dynamic routes and everything. We had a talk with a chat with a Dean and we agreed on the perfect solution, the perfect implementation actually. Um, and then P2, not that many. Uh, this one will be fixed by an update on image shop, which I think is uh, soonish. I saw some messages and some PRs on their repository. Implementation text search. Is just documentation on how to implement text search. Taxonomy deployment plans. Apparently, we are missing that. Should not be hard to do. And translate dynamic content that Isham uh, started a while ago. And he's polite not to insult me because he's blocked on me reviewing and giving more um, uh, guidance for that. Um, so that will be probably postponed from 1.0 for next version. It's not, again, it's not blocking. Okay, it's just something feature missing. So I, sh I hope that on Thursday we'll be able to spend some time trashing the, the one zero issues and really um, take them to a very small number so we can schedule a date to release one zero. Okay. Yeah, the course uh, pull request that I have for you is a P3. There is a P3? There is a P3. Wow. I'm uh, Dutch, so I'm right. Oh, P3 is, oh my God. Okay. They mean not important. We'll see. Oh, GDPR is in there. Okay, good. Yeah, also. We talked about it last week. Yeah, so many. yeah I will probably merge the course PR because we saw the demo last week. So I will look at the code and then merge it. Awesome. Jasmine didn't say anything about the UI, so he's bad. <laughs> and well, can, it's just UI, so it can be changed later. Uh, the feature is there. UI is like my expertise. No. <laughs> it's not even a good joke. <laughs> okay, good. Chit chat. Um, Okay, please close the issues if you can't repro Oh, also, if you don't know how to fix an issue, at least if they are old enough, just tr trying them and try to repro and saying, I could not repro so we can close them or ask for more feedback and maybe they are fixed because we fixed some other issues and their indirect issues. So closing an issue even without doing anything 
is also super valuable. Boom, a P1 done, you see? Thanks. So also just my fix some issues. Good job. Um, okay, questions? No questions. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. And see you on Thursday for triage or next Tuesday for a new meeting. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. See you, guys. Bye.